We all know texting on a mobile phone while driving is a very bad idea. So I'll meet you out the front entrance. But what about hands-free conversations? OK, thanks, bye. Although it's illegal to hold my mobile phone and drive, hands-free conversations are still allowed. My eyes are on the road and my hands are on the wheel, so it's perfectly safe, right? I've come to the Queensland University of Technology, where Professor Simon Washington is looking at this question in detail. So when we put people in a simulator, we can measure everything they do in the car. We can measure when they brake, we can actually monitor where they look as well as when they react to certain obstacles or events on the road. And in this particular study, we're looking at young drivers and trying to understand the effect of distraction on what they do in the car. Now it's my turn. I'll be taking a drive test in three conditions, without a phone, talking hands-free and with handheld. You just drive as you normally do. Pedal to the metal. Yeah, OK. OK. OK, have a safe drive. Thanks very much. And do I use my indicators? All right. Oh, this is really strange. Oh, this is bizarre. It's a 40 kilometre an hour speed limit, so no risk of a high speed smash. But there are plenty of potential hazards like stoplights, cyclists, and busy intersections. It's a strange sensation, but on my phone-free test, I negotiate the course without any mishaps. Then Shamul makes a call. Hello. Hello. Jane is driving faster than Kim, who is slower. Shamul is asking me to solve simple problems which increase my mental load. Uh, Jane, it's a, uh, Kim. It's soon clear that it's only possible to give complete attention to either the conversation or the driving, but not both. Undetected by the sleeping dog, the thief broke Jane's apartment. What was the dog doing? I don't know. I didn't listen. I was making the turn. <laughs> Am I going the wrong way? On hands-free and handheld, I miss signs to the airport, miss time traffic, and pedestrians seem to come out of nowhere. Uh, sorry, I just nearly hit a pedestrian. What did you say? Sleeping. What happened in my test mirrored the results of the trial. Phone conversations made younger drivers less aware of what was happening in their peripheral vision. What we found is when something is happening right in front of you, there's almost no distraction. There's almost no increase in reaction time. But if it's to the side, those kinds of events that in the, in the peripheral vision are very, very difficult for someone who's distracted to detect. What we find is, is there's about a 40 to 50 percent um, increase in the reaction time. This means if you take two seconds to notice a pedestrian coming from the side, it takes three seconds when you're on the phone. At 60 kilometres an hour, one extra second takes your car 16 metres closer to the crossing. And it wasn't holding the phone that was the dangerous bit. There isn't that much difference between hands held and hands free conversations. That, that the cognitive engagement of someone is the most important aspect of the distraction. Brain scans taken in another drive simulator study shows exactly how we lose focus. Normal driving engages the posterior part of the brain, which controls visual and spatial awareness. But when a conversation takes place, activity shifts to the prefrontal cortex, which controls decision making. And so in a sense you get tunnel vision that comes in like this and the parts of the brain that are responsible for things, seeing things out here are diverted to the phone conversation. But we can't stop having conversations in cars. So we're having a conversation right now. Your study seems to suggest that that's a very dangerous thing to do, that I'm not going to notice things as much in my periphery. Well, actually, you still will notice everything in your periphery. It's because as a passenger here, I might point things out to you and I'm not going to overload you with questions and discussion when there's a high-risk situation coming up for you as a driver. Turn right here. But really, that all depends on the passenger. <laughs> By analysing families on real trips, the Accident Research Centre at Monash University are looking at just how much distraction children can provide. It's a lot. Oh, no, 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 no. 
What we found was that children were 12 times more frequent in their capacity to distract the driver than were cell phones. We saw drivers engage with their children in, an, in a variety of ways, including reaching back to pass them food. Of course, we see conversations and singing and so on. In a, an average 16-minute trip, the parents were taking their eyes off the road for around three minutes and, and 16 seconds. And, and this clearly is of concern. It may not be feasible to ban either kids or mobiles from cars, but realising the danger of buckling to their every demand will go a long way to protecting the ones we love the most.